Do any of you guys know any companies who, by not knowing their audience, completely messed up their marketing? That's not just about having a good product. You, If you don't know who you're trying to sell to and what they want and what they value and how they think, you are at a major disadvantage. Well, you know, I have this disadvantage that they don't have or this challenge that they don't have. People around here aren't, you know, going to spend that kind of money on dog training. Um, you know, it's the, it's the economy. It's this, it's that. There's all these excuses, all these reasons why you can't do it. You got to get them all out of your head because I can tell you 99% of them have absolutely no basis in reality. And even if they do, they don't matter. You can still overcome them. You just... The, the only advantage that these people had is that they learned these strategies and these mindsets and these principles that we're here to talk about. And they are normal dog trainers, normal people just like you with extra results due to applying this knowledge. So let's talk about the things that they all had in common. One of the first things that they mentioned in their videos, when you go listen to them, they target their ideal client and they know who they are and how they think and what they value and what they're willing to spend money on or what they want to spend money on. That is an underestimated thing to know. If you don't understand that side of the leash, you know, you go and you learn how to train dogs. A lot of people were joking in the other Facebook group about one of the myths about the dog training business. And somebody said that one of the misconceptions about a dog training business that they've discovered are false, or that this thing is false, is that it's a great business to be in if you don't like people. And um, that's, it's funny, it's a joke now in the industry because this is so much of a people business, so much of a human training business. So you train dogs, you work with dogs, but you have to understand people and you have to know how they think and you have to know what they want and what they value. And if you don't know your audience, you will screw up all kinds of things. You'll screw up all your marketing. So that is one of the first things that everybody had in common is that they learned this. They learned how to target their ideal client and who they are, how they think, what they value, and what they want to spend money on. They also charge what they're worth, and they used to undercharge. Really, really, really common. Almost everybody that I, that I talk to, everybody that I work with, all of the students in the workshops and everything else, they started off undercharging in their comfort zone or lower, and often because they were getting a lot of no's. So then they think, okay, well, people are already saying no to my currently too low prices, so therefore I cannot charge more. And then the concern about increasing your prices and not being and losing business because of it. Very, very normal fear. So you got to deal with that and figure out the st strategies behind being able to charge more and being able to charge what you're worth. They're also happier now. They enjoy their businesses more without working too hard. And a little kind of nuts and bolts thing as well. They stopped selling their time. They stopped charging by the hour and they stopped having packages instead of programs. What I want you to do right now is think about the goals that you actually want to accomplish. If you get rid of all the things that are in your way, what would your business look like? How much time off would you have? How much money would you make? There are so many rewards that you get from doing these things well that are in addition to your income. Whitley was talking about how she just got to her $1 million mark last year in her business. She's got a really small business. She doesn't have a ton of employees. So that's an ama it's a major, major accomplishment. And her most popular program is um, something that's over $5,000. So her average income per client, like I said, is a right around that $5,000 mark. And it used to be a couple years ago before she did one of the classes uh, around $1,500, which is still pretty good. If your average income per client is over a thousand, you're doing pretty well, but that's how much extra potential she had. But she mentioned in a video in a, in a, in a zoom call with me that she works less than then she's taking some of her staff to Hawaii on a trip. Jamie mentioned that in her video too, about having plenty of time off. Michelle mentioned that in her video, the one that went from 4,000 to 20,000. And now is it, was it 240,000 last year? She has more time off. And the trick to that isn't just what you would imagine. It's not just hiring a ton of people and having a facility and having this major huge business that you may not even want. So you need to think about what you do want. If you don't want a facility, that's fine. If you don't want staff, that's fine. If you don't need to make a million dollars and you don't care about that, that's fine. You might just want to get to a consistent income where you can do, do it full time and have it sustained and not be stressed and not have unnecessary stress from the lack of consistent income. You might just want to double your income and not work more because you're already spread too thin. And that's what, the way Michelle was, is that she was working her butt off for $4,000 a month. And then when she changed things and grew her income, she didn't work five times as much. Like that's not possible. If she was already working, you know, working her tail off, she's not going to be able to work five times as much for that income. So what I want you to do right now is write down somewhere. It could be in the comments. It could be on a piece of paper. Write down what you're making per month right now. 
on average, just kind of off the top of your head and write down next to it what you wish it was because your income, you know, there's a lot of rewards, like I said, from doing all of these things, but income is an easy one to see the clear before and after. It's just an actual number. It's something that's more tangible and black and white. So let's start with that one for now. Write down what the way your income is now per month on average and what you wish it was and subtract the difference and put that number at least. What is the gap? What is the difference between where you are now and where you want to be? What is that uh, extra amount you would love to have? So think about that. Do that math real quick. Put that in the comments. Another thing that will get in your way is the discouragement that kind of comes from within. There's other misconceptions. And if you don't get past these things, then you'll always feel like you're running uphill. So let's talk about those uphill battles and the things that get in your way. Things like people around here won't pay much for dog training. I can't charge a lot because people around here aren't high income. One of the great things that you will want to do is not necessarily think or focus on getting affluent clients. It's not that your best clients will be quote unquote regular people who just value what you do a lot. The trick is to make sure that you understand what they value and how to describe the value that you give to people. That's a skill. That's what you're here for. That's what you need to know. But people in your area, I promise you will pay the same things that these other dog trainers are getting. It's just a matter of knowing what they value and explaining that value. The economy stinks. So people aren't going to buy something like dog training. It's a luxury thing. People are just going to not do it right now. That it was, is always a perception thing pretty much always about the economy. And you'll assume if people are saying no, that it's because of the economy. So you'll blame this external factor that you feel like you have no control over. And if you blame an external factor that you feel like you have no control over, you won't do anything because you don't think you can. So you need to just get rid of that and just assume that that's not true because otherwise it'll just hold you back just because you'll just will think you have no control over it. Another misconception is that the dog training is only a sustainable, awesome income. If you hire a bunch of people, have a staff, uh, do big board and train programs or have a huge marketing presence. Everybody knows who you are. You've got billboards everywhere and signs all over the place, or you have a big facility. None of those things are true. Most of the trainers in this group that are super successful or any of the other trainers I know, most of them work on their own at home and don't have any staff. They're just one person shows, you know, so that happens a lot. And some do prefer to have a facility and that's, that's awesome as well. It's just, you can do, make it the way you want it. And that's one of the things I love about the dog training, about a dog training business is that you have so much preference flexibility with the way you set, set up your business. Jamie in her video mentioned one thing that will get in your way is that you go through this fear period where in the beginning you're like, you know, can I really charge this much? Can I really do this? Can I do any of these things? And just that, that fear is very, very normal. And the thing that will tend to get you out of it is the inspiration from stories like this, because if you don't believe it, you won't do anything. So you have to, I'm going to beat it into your head that if these people can do it, you can do it too. And it's just about what you know. And that's why you're here. That's what you're getting out of this. Another thing that might get in the way is I want you guys to tell me, do you think that trainers who make the most money are the ones that work the most hours? So there, there are some really popular people who even just business coach people, not even in the dog training industry, but just really famous people who say that you need to be working on your business every possible minute, busting your butt, sacrificing most every other thing you have in your life in order to be successful. You hear it from the sharks on Shark Tank. Do you sleep on the weekends? Then you're not taking your business seriously. You know, Gary V has videos all the time about that, that he's just like grinding all the time, working from 5 a.m. to midnight. And if you're not doing that, you don't take your business seriously. And that's not one of my personal values. I value, you know, I have a little bit of a confession to make. I feel like compared to a lot of people, I don't work very much. We do during masterclass weeks and work like crazy, but otherwise, you know, we go on a lot of trips. We, like I told you, live in Australia right now, just because we, because we want to. You know, the kids are homeschooled, so we spend a lot of time with them. But the truth is, I know a lot of dog trainers and people in general who work like crazy, and they are either broke or miserable or both. So you do have to work hard. You know, when the time is set aside for work, you know, be very serious about it. That's really important. But work has its place. You have to have uh, some kind of balance. Otherwise, you won't enjoy it. And one of the core values of Make It As A Dog Trainer is to, is to have the life you want doing this not just make a lot of money and work really hard. So we'll show you how you can structure your business so you don't feel trapped or stressed about getting clients. You know, that you don't feel trapped in it. You're not overworking on the wrong things. So one of the things you need to know is what is the one thing that each of these trainers have changed and pretty much every trainer 
I've seen have these drastic changes in their business, what is that one thing that they've changed? Someone I follow said recently, one of the biggest mistakes you can make in your business is to optimize it to solve the wrong problem. If you are going to make more in less time, then you need to focus on the things that have the biggest impact, the things that are actually going to matter the most. So there's one specific things you can change, the specific thing that you can change that will accomplish this, and it will have more impact compared to, to anything else. So what do you guys think it is? A lot of people are saying mindset, that's awesome. That definitely is a huge part of your programs. As far as an actual strategy thing, a thing that you actually can do physically in your business that's outside your mind with your hands, it is your programs. It's what you actually offer for sale. So let me give you another kind of analogy. You know those shows where they go into restaurants that are failing and they fix everything in the restaurant? You know, they, they go in and rehab the whole restaurant that's failing. The first thing that needs to be done is with any restaurant that's not going well is to make sure the quality of the food is good. That's the thing that they sell. Of course, there's more that goes into it. There's how you feel when you're in the restaurant and the atmosphere and all that stuff. But if the food itself is bad, there's not much else you can do. So the quality of the actual product needs to be good. And, and of course, like we mentioned before, they need to know who they're trying to attract as customers and they need to know what they want. But starting with just the core thing of the actual product of what it is, that's the first thing that would have to be changed. So if their product is bad, it wouldn't matter how much social media presence they had. It wouldn't matter how many signs they had everywhere. It wouldn't matter how many cars they had driving down the road that had, you know, that were, that were wrapped with their advertising. It wouldn't matter all of these things that they do, but yet even knowing this, your tendency will be to think things are slow. I need things going faster. I'm going to need to just get more presence, get more out there, focus on the atmosphere, focus on this, focus on that, and focus on the letters of the color of the font on my menu, you know, instead of the food. So you start with the food. There might be other things that need fixing too, but you start with that because what is the high quality food in your business? What is the thing that you sell? It's your, your programs, your actual thing that you have for sale needs to be great. That is the thing you have for sale. So a lot of times, many, many, many trainers, the trick isn't to just get more clients, although you might need that too. But the focus often needs to be on needing fewer clients who pay more and get the best results possible. It's so much harder, that gap that you wrote down and that you hopefully put in the comments, it's so much harder to cover that gap if you need to bring in 50 clients a month instead of five. It's all, and the results are not as good. You'll impact 50 people in almost no way, <laughs> like very, very small. And uh, as opposed to changing the lives of, of a few and making a lot more money. So here's another myth that you will also hear about the dog training business is that only people with a lot of money will spend money on dog training. You will hear this quite a lot is that the majority of the trainers who do very, very well are surprised at how the, the best clients that they get, the highest paying, the highest valuing ones, the ones that work the hardest, the ones that listen the most are not the ones that have a ton of money. They are the ones who valued what you do more than they value the money. And they set aside that money and paid for the training despite the fact that they don't have just tons and tons of free money. Like we talked about before, if your product is good, but you don't know your audience, then you might have no one wanting what you offer. You know, your actual programs might be good, but you don't know what people want. So you're not describing it correctly and, and people just aren't seeing the value. Some of the things that have that massive impact on how you run your business and how well you do things. And it all starts with that side of the leash that you might not have been taught to focus on much when you were learning how to train dogs. You know, whenever you were going through your, you know, dog trainer school or whatever you did to learn how to train dogs, they might not have focused a lot on how to teach the people or how to influence people or, or how people make decisions or how people, you know, what people want and what you should include in your programs because people value it and what you shouldn't. You need to know what those people would value, who you want, what they want, and create programs that they would love so you can do these things. Make more, charge what you're worth, do it faster than you're doing it now. What I want you to do is think about that gap from where you are where, versus where you wanna be and the things that we talked about. And what I want you to do is write down this statement and you can put it in the comments down below or you can just make your own post and write this and fill in the X's with your own information. Right now I'm making X and having this experience in my business. You can be as open as you want. If you don't want to share your income, you can skip that part and just say, here's what's going on. You know, here's my experience in my business. What I want is to be making X and or having this new experience in my business. I commit to learning how to get there. That's really important. Don't leave out that last sentence. I commit to learning how to get there. This is something that I'm doing to your brain by making you say this. So you got to trust me on this. This is really, really important. One of the stories I told you earlier 
is that they were, we redid their programs from scratch and realized that they were just making them long because they thought people valued length and time and what they actually value is speed. So if they could get the same thing done in half the time, it's more valuable because it's faster. The, the outcome happens sooner. If you can get better at what you do and be able to be more efficient and train dogs quicker, then your programs can be shorter and then therefore are more valuable because the owner values speed, not time. So recap what things we talked about are the things that trainers have accomplished very, 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 very often and how you can do those things too, the things they have in common, that your number one focus that you first have to make your, your programs and what you actually offer great in order to make more in less time. That is one of the first things you need. And your mindset is definitely part of that. So you guys who said mindset, you're not wrong. Uh, we talked about the importance of knowing and understanding human minds too, and not just dog minds. And we talked about some myths and misconceptions that many people or even you might have at times about what it takes to be successful and how you don't need to let those things stand in your way. And we talked about how, you know, identifying that gap between where you are and where you want to be and nailing that down. So you have that goal. Like a lot of people say you can't hit a target you can't see. I don't know if that's really true, but it definitely helps to see it. It definitely helps to know kind of what you want and what you're going for head over to makeitasadogtrainer.com. There's tons of other resources there for you to help you with this and many other topics. Thank you guys so much for being here. You're amazing. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye guys.